Yo, hey guys, welcome back. So I wanted to go into a little bit of detail uh, in in regards to this question um, that basically, can you sing wide healthily? Let me take these off. Is it possible to sing wide healthily? Now, this is a controversy basically because most of the voice coaches out there in the world advocate for narrowing down vowels, especially in problem areas. Um, and contrary to that, in large part, I'm not somebody that does advocate for that. Now, there's certainly a time and place for this kind of application, but I do think there's a mis mis uh, misunderstanding of, um, uh, of, of how to sing wide healthily, basically. Um, let's first just cover what pulling chest and yelling is, what hurts you. Um, Certain vowels, like wide open vowels, so in a second we'll see an example, um, drag you towards chest basically. Their nature is chesty, their nature is to want to drop out the mouth. That's the sensation. It feels like they want to come out the mouth more. Now, in order to maintain a balance of resonance, a split of resonance, which is effectively what's going to stop you from yelling, there should always be a sense of a split happening. Yeah? Once it's isolated in the mouth, that is when you're going to get in trouble and that is when you're going to be, quote unquote, pulling chest. Now, the reality is um, on vowels and shapes that want to uh, pull towards chest, it takes more work, it takes more effort to maintain a split. So these vowels are more easy to be abusive with, basically. The, the, uh, the, the line in terms of what's possible and what's not is um, very, very close. You're getting very close to the boundaries of what you can and can't do safely and healthily. Now Adele is one of these singers, and uh, we'll see an example in a sec. This is my, this is my last chance. La, la, she, she opens up on that. This is my last chance. Um, now, a lot of voice teachers, and uh, let's just play this so to give you an example um, of the solution a lot of coaches will put out there. and. Um, it can be a solution, um, no doubt. And um, let's just have a look. Pull up, then you're going, that's the wideness you don't want. It's not last, it's la, uh, la. This is my last night with you. This is my last. Very different. And she only needs to change that and she'll save her voice and her career. There we go. So. Basically, um, encouraging a singer to move away from that vowel that's close to the boundary and move towards this, this is my last chance, something like that, which is narrow and closed down. It's easier to maintain that split, frankly. The issue comes with my understanding is that as your skill level develops, you're able to get closer and closer to the, to the boundaries healthily. Adele is one of those singers. Now, it may be that on certain vowels like that one in particular, Sometimes she does tend to isolate the mouth a little bit. This is my lip. Yeah, she, she can do that. I've heard her do it here and there. The problem is it's not all the time. Sometimes she does maintain that split. And I argue if you're maintaining that split, um, it won't hurt you. The problem is with a lot of these coaches is they don't have the ability to sing wide and maintain a split of resonance. And for them, even if they go a little bit wide, uh, they drop out the mouth. So they assume that other singers can't go wide and still maintain a mix. But the truth is, very high skill level singers can get closer to those boundaries than the average, than the average coach, than the average singer. And because of that, there's this confusion where coaches are saying, oh, she's got to narrow down, she's got to keep it real small and narrow and closed rather than opening up. But the audience wants wide open vowels, yeah? So we're at this kind of juxtaposition, this conflict between these two ideas. Now I'd say Adele could potentially narrow down a little bit if she wanted to just get through you know, a number of shows night after night after night for weeks or months on end. Um, there's a time and a place for that. But the main thing I would recommend her doing, as well as that is, working on whenever she goes wide and open, a, being 
consciously able to narrow down as she needs to on a day where her voice isn't feeling particularly good, just like this coach recommends, but probably not as dramatically. Maybe a little bit more narrow, a little bit more close, but not to the point where everything's closed down and the mouth's not open anymore because the audience won't like that, frankly. They want the open mouth. They want the wide open sound. So there'd be a middle ground she would need to find a subtler way of doing that than the very obvious way that's just been demonstrated here. So a slight narrowing down, a slight leaning towards a narrower placement of that vowel. Yes, when she needs to sing night after night, when she needs to go on tour. That can be useful, a useful tool. It's useful to know how wide am I, how hard is this particular vowel going to be at this particular pitch, yeah? You narrow down when you know my voice isn't feeling great today, um, I might not be able to get there and maintain a balance, maintain a split. However, on days where you feel good, the key is you want to be able to go wide and open. And the only way to learn that and get really good at being very close to that boundary and staying on the healthy side of that boundary is to practice it and work at opening up real wide, um, um, keeping that vowel completely pure as you want it, and frankly, it's mostly most easily learned this type of thing at lower volumes where you can really feel the detail of when that split is engaged and when we lose it and we drop out the mouth. And frankly, when we're, uh, when we're at this point where Adele's at, the difference is very, very, very small. Frank, uh, you, 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 most people won't, wouldn't even hear it. Most singers wouldn't necessarily even feel it. But you can, you can become familiar even when you're singing in that very uh, chest dominant sound, familiar with, right, is there a split happening? As long as there's a split, it will be healthy, yeah? So the point really I'm trying to get across in all this is that um, my view is that the, the complexities of this issue of is she in mix, is she not? Is she yelling, is she not? Is she belting, is she in mix? They're more complicated than a lot of people out there will um, uh, put forward. You know, they'll just say, well, she's singing wide and she needs to sing narrow and that's why she's hurting herself. Yeah, but some singers can sing a lot wider and stay in that split. Why is that? Um, because they're better singers, because they're more skilled singers. Yeah. So we've got to become very familiar with what's possible to do healthily and what's not. And I'd say Adele is much closer to that than a lot of coaches are. They're much more firmly in the safe zone. They're a long way away from getting towards something that might be dangerous, which is good if you want to sing for your whole life. Not necessarily good if you want to develop an audience, if you want to um, stand out amongst the crowd, because people can hear when there's risk, hear when you are further along than others, hear when you are ex exceptionally good at what you do. They might, be able, might not be able to consciously explain why, but people want to hear an element of risk in your singing. And Del's very good at that, and that's what she offers, frankly. The problem for her is she's right slap bang at that boundary. And if she wants to sing healthily over the long term, day in, day out, some of these ideas may be useful for her. Um, I'm not saying that this is why her voice was damaged, or why she's having voice problems, because I don't know. Um, but I will say that um, singers that do get close to what's the boundaries of what's possible and um, are in that kind of no man's land where a lot of coaches will never get to um, with their own singing and with the way they teach. Um, a, it's very hard to find help because most people just have no idea of how intricate and fine the details are at that point. They're only used to singing in the safe zone and miles further into the safe zone than you've ever been. Um, I think of other singers who push it a little bit too far and end up more than likely hurting themselves. Singers like Jimmy Necco, singers like Jeff Buckley, singers like probably Matt Corby at some point will have some voice problems. Um, maybe Bruno Mars as well, other examples. Um, these, are the, these, are, these are singers who are probably a little bit further over in terms of um, probably have crossed that boundary and may see some issues in the long term. Um, so most of these naturals are right somewhere near that boundary. 
Some of them take it too far, some of them not quite far enough, some of them are right in the middle like an Adele. Unfortunately, a lot of coaches and a lot of safe singers just aren't there. They're not near that area. They think they are, but they're not. And so they give out a lot of information that is uh, correct in one sense. If you sing like me, you won't hurt yourself. Um, But it's incorrect in the sense that um, if you sing like me, you won't have an audience either. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's where it's incorrect. Um, I'm not really bashing here. I'm just stating that people want to hear risk. People want to hear somebody that's close to the boundaries. That's not just in singing. That's in sport um, and in, you know, TV shows and um, news stories, you know, all the drama we see on the Internet, all this stuff. People want to see things that are close to their comfort zone, close to like what's acceptable, close to what's possible. You know, the the pinnacle of human achievement, so to speak. If you're singing in that safe zone your whole life, you're not going to hurt yourself, but you're also not going to draw many people in. That's the truth of it. This is a complicated issue, but I wanted to give some thoughts um, because, uh, and just to really summarize here, um, it's frustrating, some of this stuff. Not specifically um, Seth and Margarita, um, but just coaching in general. Everybody's kind of trying to justify where they're at, me included. Um, But I will say that some people are more comfortable with the idea that they're at a certain part of the journey. You know, they're more comfortable with seeing a broader picture and a broader broader spectrum of skill levels and abilities and where they are in that in that kind of soup, so to speak. Um, what I see a lot of the time with coaches is they see an Adele, yeah, and they think, well. Adele's just been successful because of X, Y, Z. They won't go to the primary reason why she's been a success. And the primary reason is she's a better singer than they are. Yeah? That's most most of the time, uh, probably 75% of the reason. I think of Sarah Bareilles as another example. Why is it that Sarah Bareilles is successful and another singer isn't? Most of the time it's because she's a better singer than they are. Now, with coaches, for some reason, they find it difficult to acknowledge, hang on a sec, maybe this singer knows more than me. Maybe there's something this singer's got, this singer's understood on a technical level, that is given them the ability to to go further with what they're doing, to push further, yeah? Maybe they're doing, you know, double, triple somersaults, and I'm just doing a single somersault. Maybe with that extra ability, with that extra skill comes extra risks, extra issues that will come up that I might even never even assimilate towards or never even understand. Um, And rather than thinking, hmm, maybe there's a balance here between, you know, understanding where I'm at, um, where this singer is, and there's a difference. Um, um, Understanding that Maybe I could take what I'm able to do further, closer to the boundary and keep it healthy in order to get closer to what this thing is doing and understand it more. So again, rather than bringing that singer back down to your level of safety, yeah? I think a lot of the time we need to look as coaches towards getting ourselves closer to that boundary, getting ourselves further and further along in order to match up more with these naturals, in order to match up with them to the point where we can say, okay, actually, almost all of what they're doing is amazing, but there's a little bit here, just a little tiny, tiny little adjustment they could make that would help it. Not, oh, they need to close everything down and sing much more narrow and make this drastic change in their sound and the vowel. No, man, you want to have it, you know, just a slight adjustment. You wouldn't take a tennis player's forehand and totally rework it from the ground up if what if that forehand's working yeah you would maybe just adjust the angle of the wrist a little tiny bit on impact that kind of thing and that's what we we should be looking to do or the advice we should be looking to give with these kinds of singers yeah far too often coaches want to drag you towards themselves rather than dragging themselves towards you 
And that's really what I wanted to get across in this video. Um, there needs to be a meeting of minds. There needs to be a meeting and an understanding of where you're at, where the coach is at. And um, if the coach is at a high enough level, maybe they can give you that correct adjustment. But they're telling you to change everything drastically and, uh, you know, sing safe. It's not good advice in my book. Yeah, you want to sing safe, uh, but only a tiny, tiny bit. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you want my help personally, you can book a one-on-one -on -one training session. Drop me a message. My email is in the description. And if you feel like this message was of value, then please feel free to make a donation equal to that value. Again, donation link is in the description. And finally, please share this video with other singers you know. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you in another video. Bye.